Hi, this is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And as a part of uh, today's video, we are going to understand how one can establish the MACO as per the recent published guideline by APIC. So MACO stands for Maximum Allowable Carryover and it has to be established as a part of your cleaning validation. To understand your swab limit, you must have the macro value in the hand. So once you have the maximum allowable carryover, then based on to the surface area of the entire manufacturing train, you will be able to identify the swab limit or the rinse limit. But before you go further, you need to understand the macro. And if you look at the guideline published by APIC, the APIC stands for API for Active Pharmaceutical Ingredient Committee and they have revised their cleaning validation guideline in the year Feb 2021. So this is the guideline you can see on the screen. Guidance on aspects of cleaning validation in active pharmaceutical ingredient plants. And this is very valuable document. You can go it, uh, go once through this document if you want to have the more information on cleaning validation. So let me take you back to the presentation and we are going to talk about the three different approaches mentioned by the APIC cleaning validation guideline. The first one is, you know, the macro can be established based on the health based exposure limit or HPEL. Now, if you look at the old version of uh, the same APIC cleaning validation guideline, you will find that the macro was established based on to the maximum uh, daily dose right but recently in the Feb 2021 they have revised their guideline to HBEL or health based exposure limit so let me correct the spelling over here okay I'm so sorry for the error right so health based exposure limit the second approach is going to be a based on a general ppm limit which i believe more popular in case of even api and drug product manufacturing and the third approach as discussed inside this guidelines guideline is based on therapeutic daily dose or the only for macromolecules or the proteins so the last approach therapeutic daily dose is only applicable in case if you have a manufacturing of proteins like maps vaccines peptides etc for, but for first for this time right let us talk about how one can establish the macro based on to health based exposure limit so this is the calculation formula so what you need to establish the macro based on to the health based exposure limit you need to have the health based exposure limit of the previous product now what is mean by previous product the product under cleaning right the product under cleaning that you are cleaning the surface that is called as the previous product mbs stands for the minimum batch size of the next product minimum batch size of the next product in terms of milligram so what is your new product plan let us say you are planning to manufacture the paracetamol so what is the minimum batch size of the paracetamol it is not about what is the current batch size of the paracetamol but as per your annual schedule what is the paracetamol's batch size which is less in its quantity that is the mbs it is not about the current manufacturing batch size of the paracetamol for example let us say you are manufacturing a paracetamol batch of uh, 1000 kilogram but according to your manufacturing according to your annual manufacturing plan you have given the minimum batch size of the paracetamol could be a 500 kilogram so 500 kilogram has to be taken during the calculation of the macro now pf is a new addition according to this revised guideline and the pf stand for purging factor and we'll talk about the purging factor after the explanation on to the calculation formula there is again divided by safety factor which was already a part of the 
earlier calculation based on to the therapeutic daily dose and again there is a tdd next so tdd next stands for therapeutic daily day dose of the next product so if your next product that you are supposed to manufacture that you are going to manufacture is paracetamol api then tdd next becomes the therapeutic daily dose of the paracetamol so within a day what is the allowable dose of the paracetamol so this should not be confused with the the highest strength of the paracetamol for example let us say you have paracetamol tablet with highest strength of 750 milligram but if this tablet can be taken let us say twice in a day so 750 into 2 that is 1500 milligram becomes the therapeutic daily dose of the paracetamol or the next product for the macro calculation so i hope you are clear on to the calculation formula so before i explain with the example let me first take you to the two important terms that is the purging factor and the safety factors so let us begin our discussion with the first one what is mean by a purging factor and here is the definition and explanation for the purging factor so ability of a process to reduce the level of the previous product in the downstream synthetic route of the next material is nothing but the purging factor so for example as we are talking about uh, the product a and product b let us talk about what is the purging factor of product a in the process of product b which is going to be manufactured and the product a is what the product a is nothing but the product under cleaning so what are the important factors that can affect impact onto the purging factor and that is the reactivity solubility or volatility so let us understand that your next product is paracetamol api and your previous product is metformin hydrochloride so you are essentially cleaning the metformin hydrochloride so you need to understand in case if there are any leftover quantity of metformin hydrochloride and you conduct the manufacturing synthesis of uh, paracetamol api how much of this leftover metformin can actually get reduced because of its reactivity during the paracetamol api manufacturing right because paracetamol api manufacturing let us say how the process where uh, you will add alkaline material and in case if the metformin hydrochloride can interact with the alkaline material the basic material it can get consumed destroyed and it can get precipitate out because of its poor solubility and then you will say okay now i know that there was x percentage of the metformin available at the beginning but look at here now the the content of metformin has got reduced by 100 times so that is the the purging factor meaning and this purging factor is very important because this can help you to further remove or reduce the content or carry over of the previous product But in case if the purging factor is not provided, if you do not calculate the purging factor, then you can use 1 as a default value. Or if you want to get advantage of the purging factor, then you need to establish the purging factor of the previous product inside the next product synthesis process. What is meant by safety factor? Right, The second term in the calculation is the safety factor. And here is the definition, the effect from the interaction between the previous product and the next product. So for example, there is a contraindication between the, the previous product and the next product. The contraindications can be not in the same class or they are contradictory to each other. So you have a drug substance which lowers the you know blood pressure, which is your product under cleaning. And now the next product is something which is actually increases the blood pressure something like that so they are contradictory to each other the possible allergens and the risk for children so these are the few examples of the safety factors so default value for safety factor is one in case if you do not have the safety factor established 
Let us understand the calculation of MACO based on to the health based exposure limit and share is the example on to the screen. And the first example here is product A will be cleaned out. The product has acceptable, acceptable daily exposure of 2 microgram and the batch size is 200 kilogram. The next product B has a standard daily dose of 250 milligram and the batch size is 50 kilogram. So calculate the macro for A in the product B. So if you apply all these values in the above calculation formula that was just discussed, right? And uh, as if you look at the example, there is no mention of purging factor and the safety factor and hence you can consider these values as one for both of them. And once you substitute these values inside the equation, you will get that the MACO is 400 milligram. That is the maximum allowable carryover of the product A inside the product B. So 400 milligram of the contamination from product A in the product B will be accepted. Let us now understand the calculation of MACO with the another example. So, let us say product B will be cleaned out this time. The product has a acceptable daily exposure of 20 microgram and the batch size is 50 kilogram. The next product A has a standard daily dose of 2.5 milligram and the batch size is 200 kg. So calculate the macro of product B inside the product A. Okay. So as I said that, you know, in terms of batch size, it should be a minimum batch size. And you just assume for, you know, both examples that the, whatever the batch size of the next product is given, like in this case, product B is uh, 50 kilogram. So assume that the 50 kilogram is the minimum batch size. And same is the case over here for the next product A, the minimum batch size, you assume it is 200 kilogram. I hope you understand what is the meaning of minimum batch size and here is the reference, right? The minimum batch size of the next product. Let us go back to the, the example number two. And once you substitute the values, you will find that the macro of product B inside the product A is how much? 1600 gram or 1.6 kg. Wow, you got the macro. But let me ask you, let me ask you, is this the MACO acceptable to you according to your CGMP guidelines, regulations and requirements? Are you going to accept that? And most of the times the answer will be no, it is too high. The question is that how to decide the MACO now? You got the MACO which is very high and for that reason, you can go for the general PPM limit approach. In case if you come across such a huge value, like 1.6 kilogram, you can consider adopting the general PPM limit approach. And that is the second approach, which is mentioned into the APIC guideline. And that is what we are going to talk now. So calculation of MACO based on to general PPM. So when to go for the general PPM? And one we discussed about uh, in case if the health based exposure limit result is very, very huge or less stringent it is not you know acceptable in terms of gmp so in that situation we can think about understanding the macro based on to general ppm limit approach second now if you look at the calculation formula for the health based exposure limit calculation hmm, macro calculation by health based exposure limit you understand that there is a necessity to understand the health based exposure limit of the previous product. What is the definition of health based exposure limit? It can be in terms of acceptable daily exposure or it can be in terms of permitted daily exposure. But just imagine if you do not have the acceptable daily exposure or permitted daily exposure of the previous product, then the macro calculation by health based exposure limit approach cannot be used and that is what this point number two talks about if toxicological data that is acceptable daily intake or permitted daily intake is not known to you for example intermediates 
So most of the times you may not have the ADEs and PDEs of these intermediates during your API synthesis and during that time you can well adopt the general PPM approach for calculation of the macro. So what is the calculation formula for the general PPM limit approach and here it is on the screen. So macro PPM means what? The macro of the previous product calculated from general PPM limit. It doesn't mean the whatever value that you are going to get is in PPM. No. The whatever value that you are going to get as this max concentration into MBS is actually in terms of milligram. And let us explain that. Understand that. So we'll, we talked about macro PPM. The next term is max concentration. What is the max concentration? It is general limit for maximum allowed concentration in milligram per kg or can I say it's in PPM <laughs> in PPM for previous substance in the next batch. Hmm? What is mean by MBS? Again MBS stands for the minimum batch size for the next product in terms of kg. So if you multiply this milligram per kg by uh, this MBS in kg, this kg kg will get cancelled and you will found that the whatever value you will get for macro ppm will be in limit of will be in the unit of milligram i hope you understand this the uh, the calculation of the macro ppm and how the resulted value will be in terms of milligram let us take an example now and here is the the most routinely used values like 10 ppm is widely used in drug product manufacturing and 100 ppm in API uh, manufacturing facility as a general ppm limit for your uh, uh, carryover of the product. So consider example 2 one more time. What happened in example 2? We know that we got the macro of this one. This is example number 2, right? And the macro we got by health based exposure limit approach 1.6 kg. Let us now consider the example number two and apply our general PPM limit approach, right? So the product B will be cleaned out. The product has the acceptable daily exposure of 20 microgram and the batch size is 50. The next product A has standard daily dose of 2.5 milligram and the batch size is 200 kg. Calculate macro of product B in A and if your general limit approach is how much? Is 10 ppm. So if you substitute the values now in the above calculation formula, that is max ppm, uh, sorry, macro ppm is equal to max concentration into MBS. What you got? Your max concentration is how much? Look at here. It is your general limit approach. General ppm limit approach is 10 ppm. So max concentration is equal to 10 ppm. Now what is the minimum batch size of the next product? That is product A, which is having a 200 kg as the minimum batch size. So 10 ppm is nothing but 10 milligram per kg into 200 kg is the batch size of your next product. This kg kg will get cancelled and you will end up with 2000 milligram. So how much is the macro you got with the general ppm limit approach? It is 2000 milligram. Now is it acceptable to you? Yeah, and you will say that, okay, it is much better as compared to this 1.6 kg, right? Here we got 1.6 kg with health-based exposure limit. But now with the general PPM approach, you got 2000 milligram or 2 gram. So this is the second approach, which is mentioned in the APIC cleaning validation guideline. And the third one <clears throat> is only applicable for macromolecules and the proteins. And you can calculate the macro by therapeutic daily dose approach, TDD. Let us understand why, you know, this guideline talks about this. So the determination of health-based exposure limit of the macromolecules and proteins may not be required. And here is the guidance that reference I've given from the EMA. You can go through the document, but it is not be required that we should have the health-based exposure limit approach for the macromolecules like proteins, peptides. So why the HBEL approach is not necessary for macromolecules, proteins? And here is the explanation because most of the time the cleaning of these molecules typically get performed under extreme pH and or heat. 
So what happens if there is extreme pH like alkaline or acidic or there is a heat applied during the cleaning, hmm, the extreme pH and or heat degrades and inactivates the protein based product. So product itself gets uh, uh, no, uh, not harmful, they get degrades and they become very very inactive and because of that the health based exposure limit calculation is not really required but how much health based exposure limit is really acceptable and here is the guidance provided then the 1000th of the therapeutic dose or 10 ppm whichever is the low 1000th of your therapeutic dose let us say your therapeutic dose is uh, uh, 1000 milligram i am just giving an example so what is a 1000th of 1000 milligram it becomes 1 milligram. If your therapeutic daily dose is uh, 2000 milligram, so what is the 1000th of 2000 milligram? It becomes 2 milligram. So you will have the uh, health based exposure limit calculation with two different approaches. The first one is 1000th, and the second one is 10 ppm. And between these two, which one is less? Let us understand with the help of now calculation. Uh, with the help of an example and there is example onto your screen so before that let us understand the calculation of macro based on therapeutic daily dose and here it is the macro is equal to tdd previous what is tdd previous therapeutic daily dose of the previous product into mbs next i hope you remember that the mbs next stands for minimum batch size of the next product the safety factor, now safety factor we just talked, right? 1000th for macromolecules and proteins, the SF is going to become 1000. What is the TDD next? Therapeutic daily dose of your next product. So once you understand the calculation formula, now let us understand with the help of one example. And share this example onto your screen. So product A will be cleaned out. Product A has a standard daily dose of 10 milligram and the batch size is 200 kg. The next product B has a standard daily dose of 250 mg and the minimum batch size is 50 kg. Both A and B are administered orally and safety factor is set to 1000. Calculate the macro for A in B. I hope you remember the two different approaches. The first one is calculate the macro based on to TDD approach. The second approach then calculate the macro by PPM approach. And the third step is what then compare the result. So which one is less that has to be considered as a macro value. So let us understand the macro with the TDD approach. And here is the calculation for that. And once you substitute these values, you will get that 2000 milligram is the macro, right, for product A in product B. Okay, I'm just checking. And uh, if you calculate the macro by PPM approach, your max concentration is 10 ppm. Your general ppm limit approach is 10 ppm. So substitute the values into the calculation formula and you find now the max concentration or your macro. This is not the max max concentration. I am so sorry for the error. This should be macro. What is your macro now? You get the macro by general ppm limit approach as 500 milligram. What is the step number three? Compare the result. Okay. So you have the both the result. Macro by TDD approach, which is 2000 milligram. Macro by PPM approach, which is 500 milligram. So which one is less? All right. So macro calculation by PPM approach is less, which is 500 milligram. So you must go with the 500 milligram as the macro for this particular macro molecule. So we discussed all these three different ways of establishing macro hmm, according to the guideline published by APIC in the Feb 2021. I mean, they have published earlier, but this is the revised version of the same guideline, Feb 2021. I hope you must have now understood the calculation of MACO with the, the first one is what? Based on health-based exposure limit, then second based on general PPM limit, and the third based on therapeutic daily dose, but only for macromolecules and proteins. Thank you so much.